Well, uh, unfortunately, I don't speak uh, Serbian, and this is something that I did not uh, just realize when I came in in the morning. It was also uh, when I took a taxi and I tried to start a conversation with my taxi driver, and then suddenly he became nervous. And um, well, after um, I uh, translated that, uh, it changed a little bit. And do you know what I said to my taxi driver? Do you want to know that? Yeah. All right, good. So I said, and right now, excuse my uh, accent, Totche uh, fro lepo freme. So we were basically just talking about the weather. And uh, I think that he thought I gonna criticize his uh, driving style in a way. Um, anyway, um, I would like to start first of all to congratulate um, the RS, uh, uh, RSNOC team. Um, the event I think is pretty good, the show up is great and what I especially like is that the gender balance is very healthy. I mean, I know that uh, in Serbia there are a lot of uh, strong women and I'm working with uh, one of those, uh, Vesna Manjovic. Uh, so um, yeah, congratulations to that. And I think that bears the applause also to Slobodan for organizing the event. <laughs> Perfect, by now you should all be awake after the lunch. Um, let's uh, start. So the thing is that I have 40 slides, uh, only 20 minutes. Uh, I will have to go very fast to some of the parts, but I will uh, try to uh, put more efforts on the last two ones. So on this slide, um, I wanted to uh, highlight that statistics are important. Um, well, I think we all know that. If I'm gonna look into the room, there is, uh, I see a lot of network engineers. Um, they usually understand that data-driven decisions are better than uh, gut feelings. Uh, that was not the case when I was last week in Georgia at a presentation that I gave to governments, but um, that's another story. For data-driven decisions, you need data, and the RIPE NCC um, provides three different data sources. Um, first of all, in the role of an RAR, we have the RIPE database, so that's registry information, then we have routing information, that's RIS, and we're gonna have RIPE Atlas as an example of active measurements. I'm gonna come to that back a little bit later. Uh, we're gonna provide access to all of these data sets uh, via our open data platform, RIPE-STAT. Um, and I'm just curious, how many of you know uh, RIPE-STAT or use it? Oh, okay, that's good. Nobody on this side? That's strange. Ah, perfect, thank you very much. Well, it's kind of successful. Uh, we have more than 45 million requests per day uh, coming from more than a million uh, users. Uh, as Slobodan said, uh, he, I'm going to talk about statistics um, based on the data that we see for Serbia. Um, to get you into the mood, I'm going to start with uh, something rather simple and uh, some very powerful tool that, we, that I use uh, in presentations is comparison. Uh, to make that possible, I added two more countries and I quickly explain you why I added those. So um, I gonna have a look, we gonna have a look at uh, Serbia plus Bulgaria and Romania. Uh, first of all, they are in the region and uh, with Romania, they are very simple in uh, many metrics, you will see. First of all, land area and uh, population, you can look that up, that's all coming from the World Bank indicates that uh, Romania is uh, uh, more than twice as big as the other two countries. Um, and what I would like to do right now, I would like to present you four different topics. First of all, IPv4 depletion, IPv6, uh, of course, because we heard about that uh, today already a lot, then internet and economy and uh, the locality of uh, traffic data. So it's uh, actually, it's, uh, uh, it's a full schedule, but I hope we're gonna finish to the end. First of all, looking at the registered uh, IPv4 resources, we're gonna see that uh, within this comparison, Serbia is not uh, doing very well with 317 registered IPv4 resources. If we're gonna look at the uh, historical development, and uh, if you're gonna look at that, be a bit uh, cautious because everything that was before 2010 uh, might uh, not be very accurate because of uh, the formation of uh, borders and countries and also a little bit of data quality issues at the RIPE NCCs, but I'm not going into details about that. 
we're going to see a very funny uh, uh, graph for uh, Romania. Um, I'm also not going into details about that, but uh, I think mainly it's about transfers. Um, if you're interested about that, I can tell you more about uh, during the break. Um, what's also interesting, if we're going to combine the uh, IPv4 space, so the registered IPv4 space, um, as we can see, um, it is uh, flattening out and that has something to do with uh, the run out of IPv4 and the reaction of the RRs to give out smaller allocations and assignments. Here is a similar picture. Romania is again uh, very funny and uh, this is also related to transfers. Then. Uh, Taking some data from the World Bank again, here we're going to have the internet penetration related to the internet penetration survey is actually doing quite well with 67 percent. Uh, uh, and uh, if we're going to combine that with the population, then we're going to end up at the number of internet users. And I think right now you're already seeing where I'm going by combining the number of IPv4 addresses with the internet users, we're going to see this graph. And um, what we can do right now, and that's uh, I think uh, a very interesting metric, if we're going to divide the number of internet users by the uh, number of IPv4 addresses, and then we're going to arrive at the number of internet users per IPv4 address. And in this sense, uh, Serbia <coughs> is actually not doing that well. So we have on average statistically two uh, internet users per IPv4 address which I think you can imagine what that means, that the uh, uh, running of the internet infrastructure is getting more complex and it's breaking the end-to-end -end principle of the internet. Uh, I also added the uh, annual population growth uh, just to see if this situation is getting worse. Uh, in this region, I think uh, the trend is negative. So uh, in the foreseeable future, I think uh, the situation of the number of internet users per IPv4 address is not getting worse. That gets me to my next point, that's internet and economy. And um, I'm trying to spend a little bit more time on that. So this is based on a study uh, done by the World Bank in 2010, uh, which found a correlation between uh, improvements or increasements of um, telecommunication means and uh, economic development. I'll give you an example to uh, see what that basically means. So we're gonna have here the uh, broadband uh, metric. If you're going to increase for a country 10% the penetration of broadband, then it would translate, depending on if it's a low or a low medium income or a high income country, to an increase in GDP. For a low or medium income country, it would be 1.38%. And at this point, I just wanted to say this is not just that uh, you're going to pour in money and then you're going to increase the internet penetration. The real uh, drivers behind that is the people that uh, play around with internet. So all the teenagers that get a phone that find maybe problems that they're gonna solve. Because I mean, um, I wanted to remind you that uh, right now we are living in times where uh, optimization is uh, becoming more and more important. So that means that uh, if you're gonna have a big company that was doing something with 100 people, that it will take uh, only a couple of uh, uh, time that uh, they can do the same thing with less people. So that means that uh, more people uh, will uh, be unemployed in that sense. And uh, I think that already arrived at uh, the government that startup companies are the only job motor uh, within uh, economy. And that's why we see also quite a run on uh, startup hubs in different um, countries. All right, I wanted to put that uh, at a test. Uh, so here we're going to see the uh, gross domestic product, which is a metric for the uh, economic development within a country. Serbia is um, on third position, um, or you could also say it's the last uh, within that comparison. If we're going to add the uh, number of uh, broadband subscriptions, then uh, we see the same trend. Uh, Serbia is at uh, third position. and. Here is the historical development of the GDP and the fixed broadband penetration. What's very interesting here is that uh, the data or the study of the World Bank basically confirms from 2004 till 2008 that there is a correlation between uh, the in improvements of broadband penetration, bless you, and um, <laughs> Sorry, and uh, GDP. And uh, after 2008, we're going to see uh, a change in this uh, graph. And uh, I would like to invite someone of you who knows the local market much better 
to talk with me about uh, these changes in the uh, economic development. Um, but we're going to do that in the break. That brings me to the next topic, which is IPv6. And uh, I think we can keep that rather short uh, because in essence, it seems that IPv6 is not too relevant in the uh, in Serbia, respectively in the region. So what you're going to see here is the snapshot for uh, 2017 of all the resources that the RIPNCC manages. So these are ASNs, IPv4 and IPv6 resources. And you're going to see with all countries that the trend of IPv6 is rather low. Here again, historical development uh, of IPv6 resources comparison between all the different countries, not really surprises there. Um, same thing for space. The good thing is that uh, with IPv6 uh, allocations and assignments is that the assignment policy for the areas is very consistent. So that means that, um, that oops, sorry, uh, that means that um, the space and the uh, registered resources are basically very correlated. What's a little bit interesting is that uh, for Serbia, we're going to have a bit of a plateau there. Um, I would think that's related with the change in RIPCC policy to not uh, require an IPv6 uh, assignment when you're going to apply for uh, IPv4 uh, allocation. So. Um, we already heard much about these data sets. So this is a Phoenix uh, measurement data sets. Uh, this is an example of active measurements. And I just wanted to state that uh, this data needs to be interpreted correctly. Because what we're going to measure with what basically Jeff Houston and APNIC measures with that is the access networks. So basically, uh, the customers that are coming to Google. And that's it. So basically, what we are missing out there is, uh, first of all, the industry that uh, is not on uh, the access networks. And uh, we're missing out a lot of uh, other countries like uh, China or Russia. And uh, having said that, um, related to these measurements, we have these uh, top players, which is Belgium, India, and Germany. And if you're going to look for uh, Serbia, then uh, it's um, not very good. Um, but this is nothing that's related to the region because if we're going to look at Romania, then the uh, percentage of IPv6 capable end users, and that's also very important because before we heard it's about traffic, it's not about traffic because Jeff Houston and APNIC does not have any insight in the traffic of Google. And uh, I mean, I think I quickly can explain that how they're going to do it. Um, uh, Jeff developed an application that uh, they're going to distribute via Google Ads. So um, I think what you measure there is uh, also very much the distribution algorithm of Google. But um, I think, yeah, that's uh, enough said uh, for that. And then we're going to get to the last point, And I actually am doing very well with time, <laughs> is uh, active measurements. And uh, as an example of active measurements, I want to uh, state RIPE Atlas. And I guess most of you heard about RIPE Atlas. Raise your hand if you have. All right, then we still have 60% that uh, did not hear about RIPE Atlas. So uh, RIPE Atlas, in a nutshell, is a measurement uh, network of hardware probes that uh, the RIPE NCC uh, distributes uh, to volunteers. And we are actually um, depending on volunteers to connect that to the internet uh, connection at home. And as soon as they are connected, we are starting measurements. And um, we have different types of measurements. We have ping measurement, trace route measurements, SSL certificate measurements, HTTP measurements, and NTP measurements. What you're going to see here is a map of uh, the different locations where we're going to have these uh, devices. And just a couple of weeks ago, we um, celebrated more than 10,000 uh, active uh, probes. We distributed actually a little bit more, but they are just not uh, online. So um, before I'm going to continue and show you what I eventually uh, wanted to show you, um, I need to fill you in into some uh, data that's very important to understand to interpret the next slide next two slides correctly. First of all, in uh, Serbia, we have uh, 50 connected probes. 
that is uh, very good um, in relative and absolutely uh, absolutely terms related to other countries um, because we have 146 active networks. So that means that whatever you will see in the next slides will cover in the best case 33% of uh, all the networks. And with that, I'm gonna go to um, a service that we uh, developed, that a colleague of mine developed, based on the measurement data that we're gonna collect. So first of all, we're gonna use trace route measurements, and I think every one of you is familiar with trace route. Well, I hope, because I will not have the time to explain it. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, some probes within a country, so probes that we know that are located in the country, and then we allow trace rod measurements from one probe to the other. And we restrict it only to the probes within a country. So um, if you followed me so far, then um, you will um, understand that if you have a, a, a source and a destination within a country and you're gonna send data or in this case a trace route from one point to the other one, then um, it, uh, it constitutes uh, local uh, traffic. So there is no need uh, to um, route that uh, anywhere else than within the country. So to visualize that, we took all the hops that we observed between two nodes, between two probes, and geolocated them. And we put that on a map. And um, Again, um, this is the last point, this is the word of caution, that uh, what you will see in the next slide is, uh, is uh, a visualization of the routes that trace route travels. This is not necessarily applicable to application data, so that doesn't mean that your Skype data or your uh, HTTP data will travel the same way, but um, it could be very likely. So, without further ado, um, this is the situation for Serbia, and on the right side, you're gonna see um, the IPv6 uh, trace routes, which is not a surprise because we saw that the uh, support for IPv6 is uh, rather low uh, in Serbia, so that's why we don't see any uh, graphs there. But on the left side, we're gonna see the geolocated trace routes for IPv4, and that basically means that uh, a lot of um, the data travels via, what, what do we have here? We have uh, M6 in Amsterdam, uh, we, have, uh, we have Paris, we have uh, DKICS in Frankfurt, um, so a couple of well-known uh, IXPs. Um, but this situation is usually very bad and um, there are two reasons for that. First of all, it's a technical impl implication that um, you don't need to be a rocket science to understand that if you're gonna send data uh, from one point in the country to another point in the country and it first travels to Europe, that uh, this might be good for the data packages because they will see something from the world, but uh, it's not very good for efficiency, right? And uh, the other implication is that um, uh, that's security related. Um, I think, um, I don't need to tell you that the uh, control of a government uh, related to the inter in internet infrastructure basically ends at their borders. And uh, I think after Snowden, we know that uh, this is uh, not a good uh, situation. A mitigation for that is of course uh, uh, IXP and uh, I know some of the uh, IXP community in Serbia, so I have very high hopes to uh, get that solved. And about the situation with IPv6, I think we have very capable people uh, here, also yesterday at the workshop, which I unfortunately did not attend. So um, I'm pretty sure we will be able to solve that. And that actually um, gets me to my last slide, which is uh, just a, a simple observation uh, based on active measurement data from Google. And uh, this shows the uh, broadband uh, capacities uh, within Serbia. This is based on 647 uh, observations that were taken in one week. And uh, if you're gonna look at the same data in, for example, in the Netherlands, then uh, you're gonna see that the, that the, uh, the x-axis uh, would end up at uh, 240 uh, megabits uh, per second. So I think there's still uh, some room for uh, improvements. And that basically gets me to uh, my last slide and uh, any questions in a way. And if there are no questions, then I might want to add a personal note about IPv6. All right, that's good. That uh, pays, that's paced the way, uh, yeah.
Could you elaborate on that trace route that goes from Frankfurt, is that, to, to France, and then to Italy, and then, and back, then to back to Frankfurt? That's, that's a really interesting one. Mm -hmm. uh, well, um, uh, under this URL that you're going to see, I mean, right now it's difficult for me to uh, explain because uh, otherwise I would have to open my laptop and uh, go into details, but if you're going to follow this URL and as I understand it correctly, the slides will be uh, available. There we also have a matrix uh, between the different uh, ASNs uh, that are crossed uh, when doing these uh, trace route observations. And there you can dig into uh, deeper into uh, how these trace routes are being built up. On the other side, all this data is freely available, so you can uh, download it and uh, observe it yourself. And if that is not fruitful, then I'm happy to, uh, to look into the data and uh, ex uh, explain it in a way, yeah. So, I mean, what I have to say with, uh, to, to this data set, there is uh, the geolocation data, right? There are two data sets that makes this uh, very crucial. First of all, the number of uh, probes that we have in a country. So if you only have two probes and you cover only 2% of the networks, then it's not statistically that significant. And the other big data set is the geolocation data. I mean, um, for everyone who has ever done anything with geolocation data, uh, it's a very tricky data set. A lot of things can go wrong. And uh, what we know so far, and we are working to make that more visible, is that 50% of the ESNs that we observe are not geolocated. So uh, the picture can look actually a little bit different, um, but for the ones that we're going to see outside, they are usually uh, uh, very much outside in a way. So I'm not sure, I mean, I know that it will not answer your question completely, but uh, maybe we're going to take that up in the break. Sure. Okay, so um, any more questions? Good. So uh, this is uh, my personal take on, on IPv6. Um, well, I think that uh, was an argument that uh, hasn't um, been mentioned yet. Um, I think um, that uh, IPv6 will follow the, um, the forces of a market, right? Supply and demand. I think that's what we're going to see will also happen for, uh, for IP6 as well. And I'm very positive that it will happen. But there's one thing that uh, I think we um, did not mention before, and that's a little bit related to the internet and economy. I mean, we have seen that uh, if we improve uh, the uh, penetration of uh, broadband, then it will create uh, economic uh, uptake in a way. And I think what uh, we uh, underestimate with IPv6 is that the huge amount of address space that you're going to get at home uh, will produce a new innovation force that could completely disrupt uh, new technologies. Because, I mean, um, I think at the beginning of the internet, nobody knew about uh, or were thinking about these uh, disruptive technologies that uh, came into existence, like Facebook, um, Google. Uber, right? And I just want to remind you that, uh, for example, Google has uh, twice as much the, the uh, revenue as the GDP in, in Serbia. So, I mean, if you're a government, um, you might be inclined to get these innovations into your country, right? And the best way to do it is to, you know, allow people to have it, right? And of course, there, there will be frictions with uh, internet service provider and they need to implement it, they need to teach their uh, stuff. But I think this is something just uh, temporary. And I think that IPv6 is definitely um, closer to the future uh, than any other technology, right? So if you're very excited about, uh, about the future and what will come and what kind of innovations will be uh, developed. And I think we should really uh, make sure that IPv6 is uh, deployed sooner than later, in a way. And I think with this one, I'm gonna stop talking.